Good morning, guys, and welcome back to our channel. We've got Chris. Hey. Ayana. Hey. <laughs> I am and I are heading out to our bus. And in the video today, we're going to give you an update, a bit of a life update, actually. What's been going on with the bus, what Chris has sort of been working on, our plans. And I also want to sort of sit down and have a bit more of a serious chat with you about just some stuff, some realizations I've had recently. And yeah, let's get into it. He's asleep. He loves sleeping in these wraps and he doesn't like sleeping not on me or Aya or Chris. All right, so this is the setup we've got here. Yeah, there's a bit going on. <laughs> I'm gonna show you inside. It looks like it's a long way off, Chris. It's, yeah, it's much better than before though. So Chris has been doing a lot of painting. What we had to do was, well, what Chris did was sand everything back because the initial paint job which, let's be honest, was done by me. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't sanded the yeah. first time, so it wouldn't wipe clean. It just got dirty so easily, and we were in a bit of a rush getting in here with the painting, and yeah, so we've used a higher gloss paint. Yeah. So we have, hey, it's a bit softer. Yeah. Softer, that's not the word. Smoother. And Chris has done a couple of coats of that. Yeah, so it should wipe clean super easy. Much easier. Like a lacquer is going to go over that just to protect the wood. Just really dusty and dirty. Then the floorboards need to go down. Um, and the curtain rods. And then we're putting up the new curtains with curtain rods. I'll show you the fabric that we got inside. And the reason that we have to do new floorboards is because Chris didn't initially use glue to stick the floorboards down because we thought, oh, we'll see if it works, like doesn't move or anything because, you know, they're nicely laid. But some water got underneath and they just need to be glued down. So that's what he has to do now. We just thought we'll avoid gluing them if we can, but turns out we couldn't. But it's just so dusty in here because of yeah, the sanding. Well. Ew, I hate that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so fun fact, something that you guys probably don't know about me is that I have this weird thing where I hate flour, like touching it. So is this the same? Like, yeah, that's of? disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that's been going on for so long. Literally ever since I met you. my skin crawl. So that is the bus. Today, Chris is going to put up the curtain rods and I'm going to show you the new curtains. Our old curtains, the ones that reminded me of illness. <laughs> We've given to our friends who needed curtains so they haven't gone to waste or anything. I just still don't know about our curtains now. They'll be better. Our curtains were just a bit too pale in colour because we have a lot of white, whereas our friends have a lot of timber, so I think they'll look much better. Yeah. So we're actually meant to be moving in in a few days, but Chris and Aya are going on a bit of a spontaneous trip without us because it's Chris's brother's 30th and they've got a surprise party. And I didn't want to take, I am on a plane yet. I think he's just a bit too young, so we're not going. But you're going without me, I'm gonna miss Aya so much. We'll be okay, won't we, yeah? Mm. We'll have fun with Nanny and Papa. Mm. Is it yum? Yeah. Hey, yeah. what's in your belly? Baby. Aya loves eating the mint straight off. So now you've seen a little bit of the bus, I think I'm going to sit down and have a chat with you guys. So then later on when Chris is working on the bus, I'll show you a little bit more of what he gets up to and tell you a few of our plans about, you know, where we're heading and stuff like that. Because it's going to be interesting, a new adventure, traveling with a newborn in a bus. We're pretty excited there. It's so amazing. Nailed the transition. Hey, little man. Mm -hmm. So I just tried to sit down and start speaking like five times and I just did not know where to start. So I'm gonna come straight out and say, I think I am somewhat addicted to my phone. 
I hate even saying that because it just doesn't feel good. But at the same time, I honestly think it's the truth. Of course, he's waking up right now. Let me pick him up. I meant it when I said he really likes just sleeping on us. All right. All right, so I'm gonna try to keep chatting with you. We'll see how it goes. Okay, Chris is just taking the kids outside just for a second so that I can chat to you because that was gonna be nearly impossible. So basically, yeah, what I just said, I feel like I'm somewhat addicted to my phone. Uh, doesn't feel like the best to even say that, but I think it's the truth and it's something that I need to look at more and sort of let go of. So I just basically find myself going to my phone constantly at the point where like the, one of the first things I do in the morning, you know, after we wake up and I feed iron and stuff is to like walk out into the kitchen from the bedroom and check my phone. And then throughout the day, particularly when I'm feeding, breastfeeding, I'm scrolling on my phone and I just don't, I just don't feel that good about it. And I'm wasting so much time for me when I'm, consumed by a phone or a screen i'm not feeling inspired to create because the inspiration that i get is from being present in my life and seeing the beauty all around me so i basically when i'm just being unconscious and mindlessly scrolling that's taken and i really don't want that like i said in another video i've sort of got some projects and i am trying to write a lot more i've gotten back into a really good journaling practice in the mornings and i'm just reading the most incredible book that actually really highlighted this issue for me so i want to talk about this a little bit more in depth because i think it's really important uh we're moving into a bus right so we have to get very clear on possessions that we own everything has to bring value for us to make it worthwhile you know putting it into the bus and traveling around with it because we're just so limited with our space and what i find is the more i'm on my phone the more i'm scrolling the more i am comparing myself to other people comparing our lives and ultimately the more i want because when you're online you're exposed so much more to things and possessions and um, advertisements and stuff like that so i find that i want more and more like i've got more desires i feel like i need more like clothing and i'm like looking at clothing i'm looking at what other people are wearing and being like oh i would love to have that which obviously isn't ideal when you're moving into a bus, but it's not that either. It's not ideal when you're living in a house and you have the space as well, because basically the whole desire is rooted in this belief that when I have something, when I attain something more, I'll be happier. It's basically putting and placing your happiness in external sources and i just don't think that ever really works because you'll just never have enough you'll always desire more and more and more when we first moved into our van we were not in a position where we could like financially afford a lot of things and also we sold so much so we could actually try that lifestyle out and i've never been more happier in my life i had so little things we had such little money but you know we had everything that we needed and we were so happy with that and i look back on those times and think i need to be more like that i need to release this stuff i've got so many attachments from where i am right now that really truly do not bring me fulfillment you know buying something new and having it that excitement is nice initially, but it wears off and soon enough, the things that you acquire just become more things in your life. So that's sort of what I've been thinking a bit about lately. And it's also made me really want to reassess my message. And if I'm living truly in alignment with what I believe in and sharing that with you guys, because I honestly believe that happiness has to be found within and I suppose my biggest concern is I am a parent and my children are watching what I do and I don't want that for them. I want to be present for them. When I'm feeding, I don't want to be scrolling on my phone. I want to be looking down into his eyes. I want to be there with him. You know, I don't want him to be looking up at me whilst I stare into a screen. And I've done that a lot, you know. And I never thought I would do that. Obviously, I 
believe also that there's so many positives to social media truly the most amazing way to connect with people to spread a message it's been so incredible in our lives but it gets to a point where i have to also realize that you can abuse it and i've definitely been abusing it not so much youtube at all i actually just film these videos i love filming them and that's sort of the end of it for me so even on a filming day it's not interrupting life that much and i really love sharing and then i'm hardly ever on youtube my biggest thing is instagram just wasting time on instagram like it's so silly so last night i was chatting to chris about it and just some of the things i've been feeling and then i was basically like i think i'm gonna have a break I'm just gonna delete my apps for a while. Even this morning, what's the time? It's 11 o'clock and I've already realized myself picking my phone up multiple times to go on there. So basically I need to detach myself from my screen so that I can show up more in my life. And I'm really excited about that and it's needed and it's time. And I wanted to share that with you guys because you don't get to see that you don't maybe you don't know how much i use my phone or anything like that and i, and I want to be honest i certainly don't use my phone as much as a lot of people do but it doesn't matter because i know that i use it too much so i'm having a break from those apps but i'm going to keep making these videos because this is important for me i love sharing and connecting and creating here on youtube this doesn't seem to be the issue in fact this is like really fulfilling to me and it feels really good but the other mindless scrolling stuff it doesn't feel good um you know maybe you do relate maybe you can see yourself in me and what i'm saying and then yeah maybe we can take a break together see how we go but yeah that's basically what I wanted to say. Chris is gonna go work on the bus now. I'm gonna hang out with the kids. I'll pick up the camera again later and carry on this video. So um, yeah, thanks for listening guys. Chris got him back to sleep, so let's see how we go this time. <laughs> Are we in winter? It feels like it. So Chris is trying to convince me, well, he sort of has to go and get greens from the garden for our sandwiches. It'll make the sandwiches so good. It's cold and raining. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> it looks so wet out there. Let's go over to the fire. And play. Yeah. No, watch out for my little brother. Yeah, but be careful of your little brother. Mm. He's so cute. Does anyone else have like first breakfast and then wait a few hours and have second breakfast, but it's not quite lunch yet? <laughs> Is that just us? Isn't that just like eating every two hours? <laughs> uh, Daddy. Yeah, Baba. I love you. I love you too. So these are our snacks. She's got some sourdough toast with avo onion tomato, sauerkraut, lots of greens from the garden, some basil. Yum. All right, so I've just come back to the bus. I wanted to show you guys what we had planned for the curtains. And I was gonna say, see what you think, but you know, you can't comment on our videos at the moment. So I miss hearing what you guys have to say, honestly. But yeah, we're gonna go with curtain like rods this time and they'll go up like so, and then just like a regular curtain, you know, will go across as opposed to like our old curtains, which remind me of like, I don't know, I just didn't like how they had to be sewn. Um, so hopefully this works. 
a lot better and looks nicer. So this is just going to have like the fabric is simple fold over like a loop thing that's going to sit on these rods. So hopefully Chris can figure out how to get those in. But yeah, I'll just go like across here. The other thing I forgot to say earlier is that yesterday Chris took the bus to get a full service and it's in really, really good condition, which is always nice to hear that the engine is good. And we've also took it in to get some guys to put together some steel brackets for the shelf that's going to go up there in the kitchen just to make sure it's like super, super sturdy and um, can hold weight. So they're getting built at the moment. We'll pick them up in a couple of days and then Chris will finish building that shelf. But yes, is it coming together, babe? It is slowly. I don't know how I'm going to do the curtain rod. Oh, this is still wet and I'll just put it on my own. <laughs> I am is just inside sleeping, so I'm gonna go in, like for him. I'm gonna show you the curtain fabric, so let me get it. That's it. There's more colour to it uh, than our old curtains, but it's still like a very natural colour and this is like block out. But yeah, I still need to sew them. Help. <laughs> All right. Here is I. Hey, you still sleeping? Mm. Hey, look who's awake. He slept so much today. So I'm just going to sort out the rest of dinner with this little guy. Probably don't need to talk like that. So we're just having like what we sort of always have, a heap of veggies, or do some tofu, some mushrooms, and some rice. But yeah, it's pretty much a staple here. But I know you guys always want to see the meals and food we're eating, so I'll show you. What are you having? Do you look like your daddy? Everyone says that he looks just like Chris. What do you guys think? Hey, hey. So I just want to show you how I cook tofu. I just dice it up and then I like make it kind of golden brown on the outside. And then I add tamari. We use like a salt reduced tamari. It's like, wow, okay. We need tamari, Chris. <laughs> so yeah, put like maybe a tablespoon of tamari, a dash of maple syrup, and then we've got some limes off the tree outside and a big squeeze of lime juice. And then I'll fry that up for a bit longer and that's it. Yeah, then you just cook it till it sort of goes golden on the outside and a little crispy and that's it. I've just got some mushrooms in here as well. But yeah, it's really, really yummy. All right, this is dinner. So we have that tofu, we've got greens from the garden, we've got pumpkin, potato, roasted. We just do it in a little bit of oil. Then we've got some mushies, some rice. Uh, we don't have much avocado, but Aya scored what we did have. And that is it. Okay, last minute, Chris is making a cashew, sweet chili cashew aioli. It makes the meal so much better. <laughs> but it's not ours, right? It's, it's out of, um, the recipe is out of this book. And it's amazing. Yeah. All right, so we've got the cashew aioli. We've got a very hungry Ayana. A very hungry daddy. <laughs> Dinner time. Are you hungry? Probably. <laughs> You've been feeding for ages though. So I'm gonna sit down and enjoy dinner together. Wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching, for listening to me ramble earlier, listening to the bus update, following along, being here, supporting us. You guys are amazing. Um, thank you, and we will see you in next week's video. Bye, guys. Say bye. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> Can you say goodbye? <laughs> Not yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> Love you guys. Dad, that's a little tiny grasshopper. You have to relocate him, Maya. Come on.
Come on, Rebecca. Ah! He's moving. He wants to walk around. Where are you taking him? I'm trying to put him outside. They can walk. 